We ask a general question now. Who would you say uh, is a better driver, a man or a woman? Well, I just think of my parents. My dad took five attempts to pass his driving test, and I think makes he only me, got me through because my mum was nine months pregnant, and the driver was like, not you guys again. Go on. But he shouldn't be allowed on the road. God love you, Dad. And me and my husband, I'm probably a better driver. So on that basis, women. Would your husband agree with that? Probably not. OK. <laughs> well, according to a new report from CarWow... What would CarWow be? <laughs> CarWow. Never mind. Um, so the UK's road safety credentials would look better if only women <laughs> drove, because the stats say women are safer. And that's because, yeah, we're only responsible for 18% of motoring offences. So do you think it's time to stomp out the lazy stereotype that women are bad drivers and instead... And men from the roads. What a novel idea. Julie Cook thinks it's a cracking idea. I do. And I do. Um, I do. so much so you'd like to ban them from the roads. Meanwhile... Howard Cox. Good morning, Howard. Howard thinks it's no more than headline-grabbing nonsense. Men always get a bad rap on, on everything, don't they, Howard? No. <laughs> yes, indeed. I mean, whatever I say, I'm going to be pilloried. It's as simple as that. Um, the fact is that I, I've seen some brilliant female drivers. On, my wife is one of them. For 50 years, she's never had an accident. My mother is the same. She never had an accident, but I think she calls a dozen or so. Uh, the, the problem we have at the moment in time is that it's the dangerous drivers we should get off the road, not basing it on gender. There you go, Julie. It's not about whether you're a man or a woman, it's about whether you're dangerous or not. But you would say that men are more dangerous well, behind the wheel. the stats say that men are more dangerous. Um, for example, there'd be a 59% reduction in drink driving and an 80% reduction in drug driving. And overall, we're only responsible for 18% of offences. So can you imagine if this was the other way around? Can you imagine if this was women yeah. who were mostly responsible? Men would be crying out for women to be banned from driving. But, Howard, why do you well, think I, that I, is... Do you think do you think that um, it's testosterone fueled as opposed to petrol or diesel fueled? Well, well, I, I've been driving for fifty years too, and I've seen all sorts of drivers, Eamon. And you know, I also owned a full Capri um, ah. many moons ago. Yes, I'm sorry about that, Isabel. I, the, from my point of view, uh, it, it, I'm sorry. I'm going to bring this back to a serious point. It's dangerous drivers that need to be. Uh, highlighted. It, it, that's so important. And I think education at a young age, we know there's boy races, but there's also girl races. There's all sorts of things going on. Mm. I, um, I know what you're looking at and I understand what you're saying. These stats, I don't think are totally believable because I've got other stats to say it's much closer mm. uh, in terms of... Can, I, Julie, what, can I sound the sensible klaxon and just say in the bid to get the dangerous drivers off the road, why don't we, and I think this is the case, increase insurance for particularly high-risk categories like young men drivers and therefore it does inevitably reduce the numbers on the road doesn't it well that is what's happening there's already higher premiums for people my daughter is uh, 31 years of age and now she's over that magic 30 age for some reason that seems to be a threshold level she drives an hgv 40 ton truck does she? so she knows yes she does and she wow. knows about driving big time but before she was 30 she pays something like three four hundred percent more than she is now paying those are wow. the sort of things. So yeah. it's happening that way. But I think it comes down to education at an early age, right back at school. And I think there should be some young driver uh, lessons going on right at school level. But I think also it's the way men and women view their cars. <laughs> I mean, when we have a conversation, you just say, well, I can't get worked up about it. Yeah, oh, I just had an email from someone saying, Isabel, you don't like Ferraris. What's, the world's gone mad. Yeah. I just, I'm not fast. I'm not fast. I know, don't hate me. You know? And Julie, you obviously, I mean, you have an, uh, a one series BMW, which is a very pleasant but small, yes. unpretentious sort of car. Yes. So obviously it's not an ego thing with you. No, not at all. I don't think driving should be an ego thing. Um, and while I, you know, I can see our other guests' opinions here, and I'm, you know, not going to shout him down, I think these, these particular statistics speak for themselves. You know, we're saying let's sort out dangerous drivers. Well, according to this research, the dangerous drivers are men. Well, They're except, not women. Julie, um, and this has been pointed out by a viewer, I can't see their name, um, but they've said the reason is men do a lot more miles than women, so obviously they have more accidents. That was factored into this um, survey, apparently. That was factored in, and they allowed for that, and even allowing for extra mileage, according to this study, women still came out the safer drivers. I mean, even, take mobile phones, for example. There would be a 51% reduction in speeding and a 71% reduction in mobile phone at the wheel offences if only women drove. I mean, 
all these hideous, terrible accidents are happening, and they are caused in the main by men. Yeah, and the point well, I was it, trying it, to make it, earlier about having oh, an ego associated with your car, uh, I, I, would, I would put it, Howard, that Julie will not be a person who will take the baffles out of her exhaust and have a, a roar. I mean, this idea of young men who drive past me with the, the most hideous noise, if I was a traffic cop, I would... I would apprehend them straight away but there is this thing where the car is a living breathing entity it's got to be like a raging bull or something um like that i think that that uh, you know part of the problem can be the way men are um uh, given cars or how they have to treat cars or if they give cars a name or or whatever i think men and women often see a car in a different way you're absolutely right, and I, I agree with virtually all what you're saying. The macho instinct for a man to get him behind a car. But we all change our attitude when we get behind that steering wheel. I've been, uh, well, my wife, bless her, I said she hasn't had an accident, but when she drives and someone gets in her way, uh, the expletives that come out of her mouth, actually it's not something she would do down the local supermarket if there's a problem that she bumps into someone. The yeah. thing is, what, the, what we need to do, and I'm sorry I keep repeating this, it's all about education. And I agree, men are the more dangerous drivers. I'm not arguing with that. I'm making the point that we should have more police on the road monitoring all these dangerous things. There's, there's dangerous cyclists. There's dangerous motorbikers. There's dangerous all sorts of people. The thing oh, is, we're talk, should we talk about dangerous driving, not talking about gender? That's my point. Okay, so uh, very good, guys. We're, we're, the road is there for us all to share, no matter what we're uh, riding or driving or whatever. Julie Cook and Howard Cox, uh, thank you both very much indeed. Very, very interesting. Howard, you said you had a Capri. Would you pay a quarter of a yeah. million for two of them? You see this uh, auction next week from the professionals, well, two Capris. Well, I've never seen a quarter of a million in my bloody life. So <laughs> simply, Eamon, I mean, I just, it just brings back a lot of nostalgia. And there wasn't much room in the back seat either. Yeah, no, absolutely, mate. Thank you very much indeed. Appreciate it.